In this movie we'll show you how we can import a DXF file into the Partmaster CAM module. So I've started the CAM system from the desktop. So from the start menu I'll choose import a DXF drawing. So I need to browse to the folder where the DXF file is stored. Click open and I get this uh, DXF import options uh, dialog box. Uh, now the main thing that you need to know is that uh, a DXF file does not contain any information about the units uh, so you need to know the units that uh, are in the DXF file. In this case uh, I'm in millimeters and I'll leave all the other defaults as they are. So that's importing the file now. If you get uh, this um, information box, just ignore it and click OK. So that's the DXF file there. If I go to Zoom Drawing, then I can see the whole thing. What happens is that uh, it creates contours, which is um, a series of linked line and arc segments for each individual shape that it can find. It also creates a pattern, which is a series of positions that can be drilled. The patterns are created based on the size of the circles that it finds. So in this instance, I'll have a number of contours and I'll have two patterns, one for the smaller holes and one for the larger holes. If you want to see the geometry that's been imported, you can go to View, Geometry Info, and these are all the contours that have been created. So there's eight contours in total, the outside shape plus the uh, holes in the center, plus two patterns, and the patterns are identified by the size of the holes. So we've got a pattern of 10 millimeter holes and a pattern of 15 millimeter holes. So from now, we can um, create the machining for this file. So to do that, we first of all to find the tool that we want to use. So if we assume that this is a pocket which is going to be uh, machined out and then the holes are at the bottom of it. So I select the tool icon here and then I can set up the tool I want to use. Uh, we'll start off with a simple end mill. We'll give it a diameter. We'll give it a length and we'll give it the cut depth which will be the maximum flute length which is denoted by this line here. So this is tool number one. And we'll define some further tools. We'll have a drill which is 10 millimeter. Again, we can set the length. And for a drill, it calculates the lead, which is the distance from the drill tip to the shoulder, based on a standard 118 degree drill. And we'll have another one of those, this time for the 15 diameter holes. So this is a drill. There we are. And the cut depth. There. Okay, so we've got our tools defined and now we can machine that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll select the tool I want to use. So I do M6. And the tool I want to use first is the end mill. And now I'm going to use an area clear op option and I need to choose the contour which I want to use. Now you can choose from the list of contours but because uh, they came in from a DXF file you may not know the names so in that case you simply select with the select button here and then point to the contour. Now the other thing about it is you can see the direction that the contour has been created in. So if we were doing a profiling operation we'd know which direction was forward and which direction was reverse. So that's the uh, name of the contour that we're going to machine. The work surface, i.e. the top of the job, is zero, and we need to set a depth of the contour. So let's say that is 20 millimeters deep. If we wanted to, we could leave finishing allowance in X and Y and machine that with the same tool or with a different tool. If I look under the options, then this is where I set the tool overlap and the style. So contour style will follow the shape of the contour and get progressively smaller towards the center. If I want to work out from the center, I click this button here, machine out from center, and click OK. So this is just a uh, information panel. And if I run the job now, then we can see that uh, that's machined that out.
If I look at it in the ISO view, switch on center line, then we can see the depth. If I look at the front view, we can see the depth of the contour there. Okay, so that's machined out the pocket uh, using the area clearance command. We can now machine the holes, so I use M6 to define uh, to select the next tool, which will be the smaller of the twist drills. Set the spindle speed and the feed rate as I need to. Now I'm going to use a drilling command. Uh, so I might want a peck drill. Choose the pattern that I want to machine. This is the 10 millimeter holes and the work surface and the depth. So the work surface for the holes, because they are uh, at the bottom of the pocket, I can set the work surface there to minus 20 and the depth of the holes then to the depth I require. So that if I set the work surface to minus 20, so it won't be spending a lot of time at feed rate going through down to the depth of the pocket that we created previously. Uh, if I'm doing peck drilling, then I need to set the number of pecks. So that machines the um, uh, holes in the order which they were defined originally. So now I choose the next tool, which is the 15 millimeter drill. And again, I have a drilling operation. So I'll have a peck drill choose the pattern I want. Again, the work surface is minus 20 and the depth of the holes might be different in this case for larger holes. So that machines those holes out. If I look at it in the ISO view, switch on the tool animation and then run the job. Then here comes the tool. I can speed up the animation using the uh, speed up and slow down button here on the status panel. There are many more options that you can explore under the area clearance operation for doing ramping in, for instance, taking multiple passes in the z-axis and creating finishing allowances and so on. But in this case, it's just this is how you work with a DXF file once you've imported it. If we're happy with that, we can call up the 3D simulator. And for this case, we'll just have a straightforward vertical mill so the simulator is being called and the data passed to it. Uh, so I can accept all the defaults here and just cl simply click simulate. When we get into the simulator, then uh, we can choose whether we see the full machine tool or just the workpiece. So in this case here, we're showing the machine tool. If we wanted to, we could show the machine housing as well. So to get to those things, we either choose machine focus here or workpiece focus. To play the uh, simulation, we use the video controls at the top. This is speed up and slow down the animation. And this is the start, fast forward, restart, and so on. So if we simply run the simulation, this is the area clearance here. Okay, so that's the simulation. If we needed to look at the machine, we could go to machine focus, reset the graphics, and then run the job again. And now we see the complete machine tool simulation. This slider here speeds up and slows down the animation. 
Okay, so that's how we import a DXF file and produce submachining.